and you can go back and watch it again later. Okay, again, I was up here. I gave it a name. Notice right here where it says Browse. You need to choose a folder to save your file. I'm going to go to my walking video folder where my video footage is. I'm going to save it in there. So you'll notice right here where it says Location. I'm going to say Browse right here. And we're going to go. I have it on my desktop, right? I dragged my walking video out on my desktop. So again, desktop, walking video. And I'm going to choose that. So again, where do you want to save your files? So managing, you should keep your files all together. Because when you're using a video editing application, <coughs> it links files, right? So if you have some sound in one folder, and you have video in another folder, and you have pictures in another one, and then you make a video, and then sure enough, one of those days you're going to remove the music from that folder it's in, and it'll have a broken Okay, It's just like a web page where things are linked together. So hit OK at the bottom. Try and keep everything in one folder. I'm going to hide my doc so I don't have to see it. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I don't have a lot of space. Okay, so. Premiere is pretty simple to use. Uh, you have a storage area to store all your footage. You have a timeline over here to build your timeline. Again, it's going to go linear. It's moments in time. It goes from zero to whatever your length of your video is. You have a preview window that's going to show up here. And then you have another editing kind of window that's over here. So the kind of flow is kind of like this. So here's a trick that I use to make sure that the video footage is going to be in the right size. When you import the video into the program, the first thing I do is I grab one piece of video and put it in the timeline. Then I delete it. And the reason why I do that is I'm telling the program what size I'm making. Because if you don't do that, it, it gets confused and might make a wrong size video. So the quickest and easiest way to tell the program what size you want is to take the video footage and slap it in the timeline real quick, and then it says, ooh, you want to make video and then make the size of your shot. If you don't do that, it will make it some random size, and things get kind of weird. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to import all that video footage into the program. To import into the program, you go under File, Import. File, import. It should show you your GoPro footage. Remember, what's the magic key on a keyboard to select multiple things? Shift, right? Or you can do Command A, but again, it'll it'll think you're trying this project file and it'll give you an error. So I'm just going to hold down the Shift key and select all of them like that. Shift click selects all of them. Shift click, and then you say import. And it'll bring all that footage into the program. It'll have little thumbnails down here. So again, my idea is to deselect first. You'll notice a lot of times I click on and off. Because right now, since we imported all that video footage, it has everything selected. How do I know it's selected? Well, it has this kind of dark gray on the top of it. So my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect <coughs> um, but I kind of click on a blank area. So if I click on a blank area, boom, it deselects all the footage that's linked over here. Then I can go and, like I said, I'm just going to drag one piece of footage. I'm just going to drag one into the timeline. So the timeline is over here. See it over here? Timeline's over here. It's under sequence. And so just drag one and drag it over there. Release your mouse. It puts it over there, but I really didn't want to use that. I didn't want to use that first, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go click on it, and I'm going to delete it. I'm going to delete it. So just grab any one of those and drag it. Any one of these and just drag it over here. When you're done dragging it, click on it and delete it. Because what I've just done is I told the program to set this up. So just drag any one of these over here to this window, and then you can delete it. Tell that sequence what size I want to mention. 
because I, I tend to so you can click on that. I have mine on the pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna edit our movie. Again, the reason why I did that was to tell this timeline, this thing, to be the right size. Okay. Now, if you want, you can name. Right now, it says GoPro 405. That's not the name. Right. This is going to be my movie. So you'll notice it has <coughs> GoPro 405, and it has this little icon that looks like a, a bunch of little squares. Do you see that one? It looks like a bunch of little squares. We're going to change that name of this to my movie or something like that. So we know that's going to be my movie. This is called a sequence right here. So to change the name, you click over here. Just on the word, it'll turn blue, and I'm going to call it my video. You can change on any of them? You can change anything you want, but this is the sequence. I want to make sure that this one is the sequence. Sequence so is the last one. So that, that's this timeline right here. It makes a little square that represents this thing, which we haven't put anything in. That's why it's black. These are footage that you shot out there. This is how I'm going to build it. So I'm going to give it a name, so I can call it my video, whatever you want. So you can change the name of anything so that you know what you're doing, right? Be organized. OK, so uh, I'm going to make my window a little bigger here. You probably have more space than I do. So as you can see, you'll see little thumbnails, and you can start making decisions of what is first, what is second, what is third. Now, since GoPro kind of does something in a sequence, it might give you some ideas. This one says 403, and it looks like it's outside, huh? Yeah. So that's probably the first one, right? Yeah. Is this the first one right here? Yeah. Right here? Okay, so I'm going to double-click the one that's kind of dark, right? I'm going to double-click on that one. And notice it puts it up here in the top. I know you can't see it very well because it's kind of dark, but it puts it up here in the top window. Do you see it up there? Right here? It's up here? So again, if you double-click down here on a video, it'll put it up here. Now, this is the editing window. This is the primarily editing window up here. Whatever one you double-click on, it's going to put it up there. It doesn't matter. I was just doing this, this kind of dark one. <laughs> so let's look at some very important concepts. You see this little blue bar, bar right here? This is called the playhead. You see it right here? So if you want to play your footage, I'm going to drag that blue bar, this blue one right here. I'm going to drag it all the way back to the beginning. You should don't break that. I'm going to drag it all the way back to the beginning. And I'm going to hit the play button. This is the play button right here. See how it says play? And we can watch the footage here. Yeah, just go, go ahead through the door. All right, cut there. Okay, so there's a bunch of junk in there, right? There's some junk at the beginning and a little junk at the end. We want to cut that stuff out and just use the good stuff, right? So how we do that is by setting what we call in and out points. Because if you notice, we have something that starts all the way over here. We've got 20 seconds, right? Too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my blue, blue bar where I want it to start. And I'm going to say start here. Then I'm going to put my blue bar where I want it to end, and I'm going to, I'm going to put this button right here. So this is the intro, and this is the end. Watch me do it first, and then you try. Okay? <coughs> so again, drag that blue bar. Here we go. I'm going to drag this blue bar. So here he's kind of not getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. So probably around... 20, 57, 0, 4, 0, 5. I'm going to put the blue bar there. And do you see this little squiggly line? It says mark in. It says mark in. It's a little squiggly line right there. Boom, you click it. Then, of course, there's some junk at the end. So I'm going to move my blue bar, blue bar, blue bar, blue bar to where I want it to stop. Right here, kind of where he's going through the door right there. And I'm going to hit the end point. So, again, I put the blue bar where I want it to start. 
hit the squiggly line. And you can always, if you don't like it, you can move the bar and hit the squiggly line again. Again, this is in, this is out. So again, in and then hit out. When you're done doing that to where you think it's right, there is a button right here that says put it in the timeline. See it right here, it says insert. It's like a little, uh, little button right here. Look up here real quick, it says insert. So again, in point, out point, where you want it to be, and then hit insert, boom, it puts it down here in the timeline, right here. See it down there? Okay, automatically puts it down there. Tell us, tell us, if you get it, So simple. We're gonna be making Hollywood movies. Well, we don't want Hollywood. Independent films, right? Okay, so what's the next one? You guys shot this. What do I what am I looking at here? I, I wasn't there. Is this this one right here? Or he's he just what, right when he went through the door. Is it this one going down the hall number four oh five? No, that's four oh two? I think it's four oh four four oh four is the next one. Oh, okay, I see it. So double click on 404, it puts it up here. Remember our in and out point? Do you remember that? So I put where I want it to start. So I kind of like him going through the door here, right? He's coming through the door. I'm going to hit in and then to where he comes by. Right there. Out. Now you can use more than one part of this video. Notice where he came in and out right here. I got an in point and an out point. And again, I could put that in the timeline using the insert right there. Boom, it puts it right after the other one. But then what I could do is I could go and find another spot, maybe where he's down the hall here, where he's walking right here towards the end right here. And I could hit another in. And out point there. And then insert that as well. So you can use... I said in and out, I put it in the timeline. Remember the insert is this one. Then I did another section of that same video and put that in there as well. Did you see that? Yeah. See if you could do that. So you can chop and cut and chop different pieces of the digital footage. Remember I said it's almost like film when you cut, right? That's where the word cut comes from film. Then uh, you just keep going. Next, what what do you think? 405, I guess? Yeah, this is where he's <laughs> facing. Looks like he's facing. <laughs> yeah. Right here where he's facing. I'm going to set in. And he's coming around the bend here. Right here. And I'm going to say, again, insert right there. Boom. Puts it in there. And then what are we at? I did 405. What's next? Is there a 406? Okay. Here's a 406. He's looking around. A little close-up of him looking around. I'm going to put that in. And then... That was 406, 407. This is his viewpoint, right? This is his viewpoint. Yeah. There we go. So his viewpoint here said in and out there. Again, insert is here. That was 407. And then 408 is what? He's going and sitting down. Yeah, so we got uh, 408 and 410. We got his feet. Oh, okay, so we can cut to his feet walking between here. Maybe between here where he starts walking here and then do some feet action right when he gets past this. Yeah. Right right when he gets past there probably. So here he goes. He's walking right here. He gets past right there maybe. Yeah. And then we insert that. And then we can cut to 410, which is kind of the feet going. Very nice footage. Who, whoever thought of that idea? I like feet right there where he passes the uh, passes the thing right there. We could do a little feet action right there. Very nice idea there. Insert that. And then um, that was 410. 
And then uh, what was next? Four. Did he sit down? That was 410. Is there anything after 410? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, well, there's 409. Where, that's when when he's sitting. Well, oh, okay. And then 409 is when he's... No, but there's more on the one we... 408. Started. On 408 where he and goes. Oh, yeah, right when he's going to sit down right here. So I got the feet going, so we could set it in there and out right when he's sitting down. Put that in there, and then <coughs> 409, he looks like he's sitting and talking to a friend. She's showing my favorite app is Snapchat, right? No, Instagram. What is my favorite app? <laughs> and show my favorite app. And then that's the end of the video. So you'll notice it just keeps putting the new footage down here, down here, down here, down here, down here. So in and out, in and out. It's that easy. Wow, that's going to take years. And of course, if you want a soundtrack, you can find a music soundtrack. A great place to find music. Uh, there's a whole bunch of places online to find music. Uh, uh, I like archive.org. Anybody use archive.org? Archive.org is great. What's that? Audio blocks. Audio blocks. Audio blocks. Audio blocks. You ever tried that? Audio blocks. I think I downloaded Godzilla though, didn't I? We can put Godzilla in there. I think I downloaded So again, import. If you find some music, you can import it. I downloaded, I think, Godzilla from the server, didn't I? There I did. Uh -huh. That one. Huh? Yeah, you're not supposed to put stolen music. Yeah, you yeah. Uh-huh. So yeah, let's uh, let's talk about changing clips. So if you want to reorder things, you can simply click and move things around. So I'm going to make this this area bigger over here, so you can see what I'm doing here. I'll make this a little bigger here, bigger. There we go, Maybe a little bigger, so you can see. And then this is a view option down here. There's like a little view option down here. So uh, again, there's a little blue playhead in the timeline as well that shows you what you have in the timeline and you have a little preview window up here. So if I put the blue playhead at the very beginning of my timeline there and I hit the space bar, it'll start. You'll see him going through the door. It'll cut to him coming through the door there. You can see, walking down the hall, it cuts to behind the view, back view there. It's a little rough there. Oh, that one's not too bad. I like that edit there, timing-wise. And then he goes around the bend, <laughs> looks around, looks around. Looks around. I'd probably get rid of that. I don't like the close-up because it just doesn't fit. But then he goes and, oh, there's the shoes. He goes and sits down and Snapchat. Okay, oh, and there's some goofiness at the end there, too. I, I see a problem there. There's an, extra, there's an extra piece at the end here. Did you see that? So I don't know, but I'm, if you click on it, you can always hit delete. It'll go away, which is good, okay? But if you want to remove something, like I don't like where he was uh, uh, looking around for some reason. It just didn't seem to fit this close-up thing here. Because he's, he's looking around right there. I mean, I, I don't think we need this part right here. So if I wanted to remove that, I could click on that and hit delete. But I know, now I have a gap. So there's a gap right there. You can see there's a gap. And there's like a little zoom option. See this little 
bar at the bottom, this is all it is. You just see more or less of your timeline. It's like a little zoom way down here towards the bottom, a little zoom action there. So if you select all your clips by holding your mouse down and dragging all over all of them, you can select them all there, and then you can drag to the beginning and fill in that gap. Do you see that? You can drag groups of things around. I could drag one at a time if I want, like that, like that like that like that like that so you can move things around you can delete things and so on and i'll show you how to slow it down and speed it up in a minute but you can see how the top chop chop you can select something delete it and move things around if you want <coughs> Yeah? Uh, this one down here? Yeah. There's a bunch of tools in there. So there's a lot of different tools and different techniques to edit your video. Um, so if you wanted to chop, let's say I'm down here and he's coming down the hall here. And let's say uh, I like this footage right here. And let me try and make this a little bigger so you can see it here. I like him coming through here, but once he gets to here, this is this is pretty jumpy here. So maybe I want to add a little bit more to the because it's like you know he, he he there's space missing, right? He's here, and then as soon as he gets here, he's further down the hall. He just did a you know he just did a he flew down the hall real quick. So it would be nice if I could add a little bit more to the beginning of this one to make him further up the hall. Now, there's a bunch of tools to do that, but what I would probably do is I would probably move this stuff down by selecting it all, move this down a little bit so there's a gap there. Then if I put my cursor at the very beginning of this clip right here, if I put my cursor at the beginning of this clip now, now that I have this gap here because I pushed all these down, if I put my cursor at the beginning, I can start dragging, and you'll notice, you'll see that there'll be a little toggling you see how as I'm dragging the beginning of the clip it you could see it and so he's going up the hall a little bit there he's going up the hall and he might even need to go a little further up the hall to make that work I'm gonna move it down even more again I'm putting my cursor at the beginning of this clip right here and I'm gonna drag it and that's sort of probably right about there because right that's right when he goes past the sign right right about there so you're changing the endpoint by putting my cursor you see the little red arrow right there I'm changing the endpoint, and so now it's more appropriate. And now, if he's walking down the hall, you'll see it's much better because it's going to cut to right where he is about there. See that? See how that's better like that? Again, so the the footage that you see here, all this footage has an in and out point. Remember, there's a beginning and an end of each one of these. If you put your cursor at the beginning, you could drag. You're changing the endpoint endpoint and if you put your cursor at the end you're changing the endpoint right so each one of these footage has a starting point and ending point and you can adjust that by moving things around and doing that and then there's a bunch of tools over here that'll do that too but boy I'm not ready to go into slipping and sliding um, it, it's a little bit there's they're, they're a little complicated there I would just try and move things around and get used to moving in and out there So you can fine tune like that. Okay. You guys want a title, right? So a title, or Adobe needs a title. So uh, let's make a title now. Adobe is getting rid of their title window in their program. They don't want you to use the title window here. They're, they're getting rid of it. It's still there, but they're they give you a little message saying, eh, it's going to be gone soon. They want you to use After Effects, or they want you to use Photoshop.
You know, it's like I like the title window because it's quick and easy, and I can do it very fast without having to use another application. So that's the only thing I like about it. You know, I I, I use it. So to put a title in, I'm going to use the built-in title window in the program. So before I use the built-in title window of the program, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cursor where I want the title to go. So I'm going to put the cursor, not at the very beginning, but sort of maybe right when he's about to walk by here, sort of, maybe we'll have a pop-up just a little bit right there. Okay, so I'm going to put the cursor where I think it should go. And then I'm going to go to where it says File, New, Legacy Title. See, they're already calling it Legacy Title. They're going to get rid of it. It's called File New Legacy Title. They're getting rid of it, but I'm going to use it anyways. Legacy Title? Yeah, do you see it? Yep. Click on that. Uh, it gives you a name. Notice the size. It's telling you. It's recognizing a dimension. So this is to pick. The video that we shot with the uh, GoPro is 2K. It's 2,704 pixels by 1,520 pixels. And that's why it's telling you that. So if I hit OK, it'll bring up the title window. Notice it takes a frame of the video, so you can see a little bit of the video there. You'll notice there is a T for text right there. See, it says Type Tool right there. If I go and I click in the center of the screen here, I'm going to click in the center of the screen, and I'm going to center my text. See the little center align? There's like a little center align up there as well. So I clicked in the center. And there's a center line, and I could type in some text. This is uh, what are we doing? We're going to talk about Snapchat, right? Walking to Snap Talk. What? what no. What, what other app do we like to look at? Instagram, right? Instagram. Insta. S T N. How do you spell Instagram? I N S T A G E. No, that's in stage. I spell Instagram. Insta. In Insta. G R E M. No, that's wrong. I still can't spell Instagram. Spell. I S T A G R A M. Okay. I N S T A G R A M. Okay. Now to change the size, there is a font size. It's over here. Now you need to get used to this. This is the way Adobe works. How you resize things is by putting your cursor over a number. So in this title window, you notice it says font size right here. Do you see that? If I put my cursor over the number, notice how the cursor has a little finger and two little arrows on the end. What that means is I can drag. It means you can scroll, scroll the term is scrub. So if I put my cursor there and start scrubbing, you'll notice my text gets bigger. Okay, again, you're going to have to get used to that because that's how all those uh, little things work there. Again, you put your cursor over there, you'll see a little finger. Hold the mouse down and drag, and it should make it bigger or smaller. Okay, and then there's font, right? You got fonts. So you got fonts right here. And so on. Ooh, that's a horrible font there. Ooh, they got some ugly fonts in here, don't they? like any of them. Did you show how to center it? Uh, this box right here. 
center align. It's up here at the top. See it right here, center align. You could also, if you want to move it, there's a little arrow tool right here. It's called the selection tool. You can click on that and drag your text where you want it to be because you don't want it over top of his head. I want it to come down here towards the bottom. So again, you can move your text around so it's not in the center completely by putting it using the arrow right here and you can click and drag. And we might make it bold. There we go. Let's not do that. When you're done with your title, you think you're cool, you got it where you want it. I'm going to hit the little red X in the upper corner. See the little red X all the way up there? I'm going to close this window. I already have it. It's cool. Now, I haven't put it in my video yet. It's just over there. So one thing to keep in mind is how this program works is like Photoshop, right? You ever use Photoshop and you have layers in Photoshop, right? You have a bottom layer and you put something on top of that and you put something on top of that and you put something on top of that. Well, this is the same way. Here in my timeline, you'll notice I have multiple A's. See the B2, not a rocket, the B2. Yeah. I'm starting to go a little crazy. I'm sick. <laughs> We're going to have to go home soon because my brain is really hurting. But I could drag that title in up here above the, where I want it to go. Okay, so I can grab this text down here and drag it up here above here. So you drag it. It's a dragging motion. So you can see the text over here. See the text down here, right here? I can click on that and I can drag it over here and put it above my uh, thing here. And you'll see the text shows up. Now, by default, it's five seconds. I mean, that's the default, but we can change that. Yes? The cheap way to fade the text on and off is to use a transition. So the easiest way to... To, to get the text to fade on and off is to use a transition. And the transition I use is called uh, Dissolve. So the Dissolve is located in the Effects window. And you'll notice there's one up here that says Effects. I don't, I don't know. It's way up here. Do you see an Effects at the very top, sort of towards the top up here? It says effects right here, right here towards the top, up here. Yeah, up here. Or you can go under window and say effects, window, effects. It should pop up somewhere. And inside the effects pop-up window, you'll notice this one. It says video transitions, video transitions. You'll see a little, little arrow next to that. If I twirl that down, it'll give me more options. Then if I want, I can twirl the dissolve down. And you'll notice there's one called cross dissolve. I'm going to grab that cross dissolve and put it at the very beginning of my text by dragging the cross dissolve at the very beginning and drag cross dissolve at the very end. So again, dragging motion. I'm dragging the word cross dissolve to the beginning and the word cross dissolve to the end. You put this little C and what you'll notice is that the text now, if I play my video by hitting the space bar, You'll see the text fades on, and then it fades off. So it's a very quick, easy way to fade something on and fade it off is this cross dissolve again. It's underneath effects. To bring up effects, you either click here or go under window effects. And you can then click and drag it at the very beginning, drag it at the end. There's little triangles right here that twirl them down. And then uh, I have my video pretty much uh, pretty good. I think it's it's coming along here. And if I hit again, if I put it at the beginning, hit spacebar. He's walking to view Instagram. And we fix this part where it's a little bit better of a cut right there. It's a little better cut. We have the director there. It looks like the director was there. Another director here. Assistant director there. Yes, it's going down the hall. 
turns the corner. Uh oh, another director there. Looks left, looks right. Uh oh, she's not there, but all of a sudden she showed. Maybe you were a ghost. She was the ghost. This this girl, she's the Instagram. The ghost. There it is. I know it's kind of cheesy, but you know, there's some concepts there, in and out points. <coughs> now, if you want audio in there, if you want music in there, you can import music like you import the video footage. And I have some music right here. You can see it right here. Music right here. I got my uh, Godzilla in there. That's a pretty bad song for this video. Uh, again, if you want to find music, you could go online. Uh, you know, uh, I like archive.org has some good audio. Um, there's some really good movie soundtracks. If you want to steal a movie soundtrack, there's a movie. There's a movie soundtrack show called Other Side of the Tracks. Other side of the tracks, T R A C K S. So again, on archive.org, there is a soundtrack, like movie soundtracks, called Other Side of the Tracks, is what it's called. So if you just search on there, you'll see there's a bunch of uh, soundtracks for all kinds of movies Australian, Acid Westerns, all kinds. These are all like vintage surf ones. 80s, I always like the 80s one. Folk horror, right here. I'm going to show you. I need to download one of these. Uh, of course, my favorite is Angelo Bellamenti, the guy who does, uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Twin Peaks soundtrack, right? He did the, uh, you know, he's got the Laura Palmer theme right here. Right? You guys remember Laura Palmer? He's got, and you got, then he's got a whole bunch. He's got Drive, I believe. Is, oh, no, this one isn't Drive. Beginning of uh, the next level. Um. <laughs> so this is a whole, like, two hours of nothing but Angela Benamente stuff. This is what I, I put. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. You could chop it up. So uh, that or... Um, so if you want to download this and use some of this in your in your movie, if you look in this program, you'll notice on in the corner over here is going to be an MP3 right there. Do you see it? See the MP3 over here? So you could just control click on that, save link as, and download the MP3. Uh huh. There you go. Steal anything from there. So, again, I can download this music. I'm sure you guys know how to download music. I'm going to throw it on my desktop. Then, uh, it, oh, it's done. No, it's still downloading. What's that? Is there a way, um, every time you see, the, like, when you put stuff into the timeline, there's always this weird crap that's left over at the end, like, every time you have it delete these little snippets. Yeah, I don't know why it was doing that. It did it to me, too. Yeah, it I, I've i never really noticed that. Yeah, it seems like maybe this version, um, I don't really use the insert very often. I usually drag from over here down. So it might be using the insert button. So, so again, you can import music. If you downloaded some music, I can import. Uh, I just did that Ale Angelo Bellamente music here. If you double click on the music inside of the program, it'll show up over here. And just like you did in and out points with the video, you could do in and out points with your music. So if you play your music, 
We're gonna put the Laura Palmer theme to this music. Uh oh, that's it. Uh, <laughs> so here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna go put the Laura Palmer theme here. So again, you could set an in and out point. So again, you could set in just like you can with uh, uh, video footage, and then I could set out. And then instead of using the insert window, instead of using insert, I'm going to drag. There's like a little icon that looks like music right here. It says drag audio right here. Do you see it? So again, you could set it in and out just like you could with video footage. And I'm going to drag right here down to a, 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 a empty audio spot down below. Remember there was an empty audio or video spot for our title, right? I could drag it down there to the empty uh, spot for my thing. And if your music's too long, like my music's a little too long, you can drag the end of it and line it up. Remember how we were setting in and out? So you can drag it and line that up. And then you don't want the people talking. You can M this. M means mute. So there's no sound on this track where the audio is with the video footage. So I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to mute it. And so now all I have is the music track again. Just like I did with video, I set it in and out point. I drag it in below. And now I have my video with my sound going. There he is. Uh-oh. The Laura Palmer theme. He killed Laura Palmer. I'm going to do is save. If you if you save in this program, let me move my windows around a little bit here. Move my windows around a little bit. Okay, so that's kind of. If you just go under File, Save, what it's doing is it's saving a project file. What that project file is, it's not a file you would put on YouTube or anything like that. What that project file is is how it put it together. Right? You're saving a file that that puts this all these pieces together. But it's not a, it's not like a, a video. File. It's a, Basically, an XML file. I don't know if you know any programming, but it's an XML file. Okay. But well, what I need to do is click on my timeline down here and make it blue. But notice that if you click around, you'll see the windows. You see the little blue line. So I need to make the timeline blue. So what I mean by that is I just click on the timeline somewhere down in this window down there and see. Oh, see how it turned blue down there? See that blue, blue. See that? If I go and try and export now, it's going to export this because it's blue. See how it's blue? Right here, right? Blue. I want to export this and make this into a video. Okay, so to make this into a video, we're going to go under File. Make sure, that's blue first. make sure this is blue. The timeline down here is blue. We go under File, Export, Media. File, Export, Media. And then it's going to come up with this window, which looks confusing, but that's okay. We will learn. Okay, this is this is a very important window to learn from because this is telling you, hey, what format am I moving? Is it going to be a JPEG? Is it going to be PNG? Is it going to be a GIF? Is it going to be Photoshop, PSD? Is it going to be that? There's a whole bunch of different formats in here. So let's do YouTube. What is the YouTube format? Anybody know what YouTube format is? It is MP4, but it's it's called H264. 
So you see where it says format up here? You're going to go to the one that says H264. That's for YouTube? That's the, for YouTube. H264, YouTube. That is YouTube. Remember, I'm, I'm recording this <coughs> demo. You can go back and watch this again. I'm going to have to cut out. There's a big gap in the middle, though. I'm going to have to cut that out. But again, H2, H264, do you see that one? Then where it says preset right here, preset right here, we want to change it to, what did we do? We did 2K, right? Oh, there is no 2K in there, is there? There's YouTube. What do we got? Oh, yeah, no. What? We got YouTube HD. We got YouTube 4K. Yeah, this is fine right here. The, this one right here is fine because remember we did the dimension, right? Yeah, I know it says 4K, but it doesn't really do 4K. YouTube doesn't. It actually does 2K. They, 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 they. So again, did you see it right there? It's this one because it was 2160. Wasn't that the, the dimensions I think it was, right? And then uh, to give it a name is right here. Do you see where it says output name right here? See where it says output name right here? So you can click on that. And I can give it a name. Uh, this is my final uh, walking or whatever you want to call it. And make sure you know where it's going. It's going in my same folder. Remember, I chose my folder before. And then when you're done, you hit the, the word that says export, and it'll go and make it into a movie. You'll notice what it's doing is it's calculating all rendering means it's encoding. It's calculating all that, make it into a final video. So it takes all your pieces and puts it together into one file. Then you upload that to YouTube and you become famous and then you start advertising on your YouTube channel and then they start throwing money at you and then you move to uh, uh, Florida. <laughs> 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 there are a lot of them, though. <laughs> it's cheap to live in Florida, so all the big, all the big